we need to demonstrate a strategic orientation in appreciating that mining is a long-term business and one of South Africa's few industries that is able to give the country a competitive advantage on a global scale and in the long term. That is, when we make a decision, we make a decision for 30 to 50 years. Governments that change every five years cannot change policy settings every five years. If that is how we're going to run the country, please don't be surprised that mining will struggle to support the direction of the country if it changes every five years. When we set policy frameworks for the country, it has to be for 30 years. We have to take on the ideological conversations that are necessary for investors to feel that they can rely on what we're doing over 30 years. The Constitution is a great example of a document that will give us comfort for the long term, but that then has to be backed up with a consistency of approach through every five years in terms of the policy setting mechanisms for the major parties. And this goes across the political spectrum. Second, we need to provide greater clarity on ownership. You've read many books about various political structures, capital. The most important things in terms of capital and making progress is certainty around ownership and tenure of land. We need to sort out the current impasse on BEE, -E, uh, BEE, -E, BEE, BEE and BEEE -E -E ownership so that people are willing to invest. We can't keep changing the rules and quite frankly, the courts are not the place to sort that issue out on a long-term sustainable basis. The courts should be there to test an interpretation in a particular circumstance. But the courts shouldn't be there to provide an answer on a far more global and holistic issue. We think that has to be a dialogue and it has to start now. And we have to make sure that we come to a solution that isn't reliant on a single judge or a legal system that is not constructed, quite frankly, to provide the answers and guidance in terms of where this society goes. And so we want to engage in a very different conversation and sort that issue out. And for those where we and the government may differ on whether empowerment has been delivered or served, then let that particular issue, because every issue with an individual company will be different, that can be tested in the courts. But don't let the courts decide the future of this country. That's not their role. Their role is to interpret the constitution and the legal framework for the country and make sure that those laws, statutes, the principles that have founded this constitution are appropriately interpreted to make sure that that track is navigated in an appropriate way. We need to facilitate consistent policies and legislation across government departments. Investors need coherence and stability. We must integrate policy between governments before, we become, before the policy is enacted because an inconsistent policy in one department can be an absolute or create an absolute crisis in another department. We have to get beyond that and the integration of policy is critical in terms of making sure we're sending consistent and the correct messages across all facets or all areas of society. We must not let the expression of ideological differences manifest in different departments' approach to framing policy. We must not must not let ideological differences in various government departments frame policies that don't link to the broader thrust of the government's platform. We need to ensure that all mining companies complete, compete on a level playing field and that from all of our points of view, we are playing in a competitive environment. I think generally that's pretty well practised across the industry, but it is a point that I think we should always make. We must create and maintain supporting energy, water, transport and other infrastructure required for business to function. If the government is unable 
to fund that infrastructure, and by the way, most governments can't, then let and encourage private enterprise do the job within the construct of a national infrastructure strategy. Let us help. Let us become part of the answer. Don't take that accountability and responsibility on as an individual government. Let's make sure that there's a partnership. And I think many of the policy setting conversations are heading in the right direction on that front. And again, I think that's been picked up well in the NDP. Please carefully consider the implications of declaring a mineral as being strategic in terms of investment appetite. In fact, there's nothing wrong with declaring a mineral strategic. But let's make sure the implications of that declaration protect the rights and ownership of those that have invested monies per the Constitution so that there's no investor that's scared to invest because they think a government may change the rules. We have a Constitution. Let's make sure all of our policy setting frameworks are consistent with the, with the Constitution. And please, let's not change bilateral trade agreements that protect foreign investment. Let's not arbitrarily cancel those agreements without giving careful thought to the unintended consequence of those types of actions. That's critical. We must apply international commercial logic to the beneficiation of mineral products. We can't create unsustainable industries without building them on a base that we can and we believe can be competitive in the long term. There is certainly nothing wrong with encouraging investment, supporting start-up companies, but we must have a longer-term strategy and belief that an industry can be competitive in its own right. And then there are transition processes and approaches to do that. In all of our policy-setting frameworks, let's make sure that our competitiveness as a country is protected and not reduced. At the end of the day, any policy framework that we develop should be tested against its ability to improve the competitiveness of the country. If it reduces the competitiveness of the country, it should be kicked out. We have 26% unemployment. It should be the most important criteria used in deciding whether legislation will less promote investment, will less promote jobs, does it stand that test? If not, it shouldn't be passed. Now, I qualify that in terms of social equity and making sure from a social perspective we remain a socially fair and equitable society. And that is a great challenge given, us our, given our history. But I make it within that context. Fortunately, and I'm always encouraged that I believe there are people in government that understand those principles and speak for those principles and argue for those principles. And in the main, I think we are making progress. 